Uh, we've all heard about the climate crisis, I guess. This is not a new term to any of us. Uh, and I will talk a bit about the climate crisis, but from my perspective. Uh, but first things first. For those of you who have seen the, the movie The Watchmen, it's based on a comic book, you might remember that the, the, the clock ticking down towards a nuclear war. And you might also remember that there are superheroes in the world. Uh, the climate crisis that we're facing is, however, not a movie. It's reality and dead serious. Uh, and we, the people, need to be the superheroes. So the issue of the climate crisis is pressing, so much that the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists recently sharpened the threat of the climate crisis by pushing the clock forward to three minutes to midnight. And midnight represents our climate's doomsday. So it is obvious we need to do something about this. So why would a psychologist be interested in this? Uh, and how can psychology contribute? Well, my interest is in the human dimension of the climate crisis. A climate crisis that is viewed as an environmental dilemma, or even a moral dilemma by many. Uh, and this environmental dilemma can be defined as a phenomena that we in academia call a social dilemma. And in a social dilemma, you have a choice between acting in your self-interest or in the interest of a collective. So my short-term gains and interests are put against long-term consequences. It is as such a battle between short-term and long-term thinking, or as you will, between good and bad, or as depicted here, between the angel and the devil securely placed on each of our shoulder. To give you a better view of this battle between this angel and this devil, let's start with the devil's short-term thinking. The devil argues, buy yourself something nice. You've earned it. Don't worry so much about the waste. It will go away somehow. The car is yours to use. Why not live on the countryside and work in the city? Nothing's impossible with a car. And if there's problems, buy another car. And new technical gadgets will improve your life, make it easier. Don't worry so much about the materials and the energy used. Go for it. And be open for new experiences. See the world, travel, enjoy yourself. And let's put Christmas lights in all our trees in the cities and cover the cities with light during this Christmas season. I mean, it's beautiful. Sounds quite nice, doesn't it? But with short-term thinking comes long-term consequences. So let's look upon the shoulder where we have the angel, and the angel have a long, more long-term thinking about things. And this angel directs us to actually think of the future, care for the climate, and through that, care for the children that will inherit this world, leave a positive legacy to these children that we love so much. Travel with some alternative mode of transportation. There are buses, there are underground. Or why not use the bicycle? Or you can even take a walk now and then. Care not only for humans, but also plants and animals around you. Care for these things. Produce less waste. And sort the waste you do produce. And stay closer to home you'll travel less. So who's winning the fight then? Well, as you may have guessed, quite often the devil's argument has won in the past and is winning in the present. And the angel on our shoulder is all too often overlooked 
and its argument is dismantled, as this angel is. And as a consequence, the temperature is rising. The month of March this year, 2015, was the warmest March globally that has ever been measured since they started measuring in the late 1800s. And also, the weather is getting more extreme. We can see it on the news quite often about extreme storms and other extreme weather. And as I said before, the clock is ticking. Midnight is closing in fast. So, can we do anything about it? That's the big question, the $10,000 question. Well, yes, we can, as a famous politician once said. But, there is always a but. We shouldn't kid ourselves, it's not going to be easy. There are big changes that need to be done that will affect both our lives and our everyday activities. So the question is, which way do we turn? What behavioral changes are needed and how do we get there? In my mind, we have two ways forward. And that is either by nurturing our bad conscience or by turning back in time as a way to save the future. So why nurture your bad conscience for a sustainable future, you might ask? Well, it's a good question. Well, it's all about internalizing your basic collective values. That is, when we hold values such as equality, social justice, unity with nature close to our heart, and use them as guiding principles in our lives. These collective values have the potential to activate a personal norm. And when activated, this personal norm is manifested as a perceived personal moral obligation to do something, in this case, about the environmental problems. Still not getting it? Why the bad conscience? Well, when we don't live in accordance with our held values, our collective values, we go against our own moral convictions, hence the bad conscience. And this bad conscience is a constant thorn in our side that reminds us of the mismatch between what we believe and how we act. And I believe we need to make use of this bad conscience, because together with a high level of environmental awareness, an activated personal norm is a very good start toward behavioral change. So what can we do? Well, we need to install collective values in our children, because that's where it starts. That's where we form our value basis. But we also need to press the already existing moral, environmental buttons in people. In this way, we can activate a personal norm and change the mismatch between values and behavior into a matching relationship. Another, perhaps more challenging way is to turn back in time as a way to save the future. I think we need to question the qualities of modern life and also question if progress always is the way forward. Perhaps we instead need to live more like we did before with a very clear local focus, just more densely built. We need to reinstate the micro-local opportunities for shopping and services, such as the butcher, the bakery, the doctor's office, and so on. It would be a new age for the old neighborhood life. But also, live close to work. 
and live life in a slower pace, we need to get the time to wait for a bus. You know, this actually sounds quite a lot like what we pay a lot of money for to get out of our vacation trips. So maybe modern society and we who live here can learn from the past. Maybe progress is to look back in time. And perhaps the consequence is that every day is a vacation. Some food for thoughts, I hope. So we have a choice to make about the future. It's not so much about which particular road to take. We need to make changes on a broad spectrum of both lives and technology, because yes, we need technical developments. But it is of vital importance that we actually change the way we move on the road we're on, and that we start the change now. So let's go forward, nurturing this bad conscience of ours, and more importantly, changing it into action. And let's change the perspective of modern life. Maybe then we can avoid the worst scenarios of the future climate crisis. Thank you. <laughs>